Welcome to Deep Dive. I'm your host, Kevin Benedict, and I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited to be able to introduce Ingenio Cassiano, who's the Chief Innovation Officer for SAP Customer Experience. Ingenio, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning here in the beautiful California. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, as usual, I love to have a great conversation here to, with you today. Yeah? Yeah, so I understand, you know, I'm cutting into your holiday, so we'll make this uh, brief and jump right into it so you can get to the beach. Now, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Now, you have such a cool background that, you know, give us, how did you end up in this role as Chief Innovation Officer? Yeah, that's very, very funny. So because uh, uh, I started very young to, you know, to do entrepreneurship and also to, to run my own company when I was uh, around 18. It was still in the IT space. Uh, we did a couple of things in the hardware space and then software space. And yeah, and then I moved up into university, uh, being curious all the time, ending up in consulting uh, for a few years, uh, strategy consulting, then IT consulting. But uh, one thing I was curious every time was this uh, continuous learning. And was this aspect of, uh, you know, I want to do something and I don't want to stay in my comfort zone. And uh, if you think about uh, innovation is all about it. It's, uh, you know, you want to go to the next. You want to exit your comfort zone and try to, to learn something new that can be beneficial for the others. And that's how I ended up. So now I love to run the innovation agenda for SAP customer experience. Oh, that's great. When I think of you, I think of like, you have this laboratory, you're like this, you have a lair or a, you're a, a mad scientist creating all kinds of new things. So I picked this background just for you. This is like a lair where you can go in and come up with all these crazy ideas. So tell us what you get to do on a regular basis. When you come in the work, what kinds of, how do you innovate? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, when, um, you know, we have a clear, uh, mm, you know, we, we work on three major aspects. The first one uh, is, uh, yes, we are an IT company. And when we need to talk about innovation, we look at emerging technologies. And uh, the second point is uh, we don't only go and play with technologies, but we, we ask ourselves with, uh, with our team is, which problem statement are we going to solve it? And then if we found a good solution, something which really makes sense into the space of customer experience, then we might figure it out which great technology, which is totally new at the moment, might be beneficial then to, to do some uh, proper research. Yeah? That's the first aspect. Then I also have a team which is working very closely with customers. They don't stay in a laboratory. They really go <laughs> and visit customers. And this is what we do with co-innovation. So actually we look customers that are already, let's call it, uh, I, I love to call it as Alex uh, called the famous uh, customer experience leaders. What does it mean? They already leapfrog. They already went through, uh, let's say, wave one of digital transformation. But now they are looking for next leapfrog, maybe activating new business model, um, looking on uh, how to grow their top line growth. And that's what we do. We work together with those customers and uh, we find new business model, hopefully leveraging our beautiful uh, SAP technologies underneath. And as you know, we just recently announced the partnership with Apple. And what we do, we try to work a lot on building beautiful B2B um, iOS apps, as example, that are leveraging in the background our SAP customer experience tools. Yeah? And finally, uh, innovation, I say technology, I said customer, we also look at our innovation ecosystem, such as working close to, with universities, working close with startups, and uh, as example, we have SAP IO in SAP, where we really help those uh, mechanisms to promote incubation of new business models. Yeah? Well, it's a nice job. I love yeah. it. 
All that is fascinating. So what are some of the technologies that you're able to talk about that excite you today? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I really love is uh, there is a quote from uh, Bill Gates. And once he said, everyone is overestimating the impact of technology in the next two years, but everyone is uh, underestimating the impact of technology in the next 10 years. Um, and I can give you some example. Um, and this goes even on uh, what I observed in innovation in customer experience. Um, when we started, uh, you know, many years ago, the category was called CRM. And then after CRM, we started to add this digital channel. It was the multi-channel. Then we went omni-channel. And now we talk about unified. So we want to have uh, this uh, union between uh, physical experience and digital experience. And now what I want to tell you, back to the Bill Gates uh, quote, is... Uh, Back in 2013, we were releasing, at that time, an initial concept where someone that was going into a store was able to connect his physical experience with the digital world. But the problem was technology was really new at that time. The market was not ready. But now you see more and more uh, the new way our retail is moving, is transforming. Everyone is physically is, uh, putting focus on digital, creating these digital, digital experiences. And that's why, again, back to innovation, think about the technology you wanna use, but also iterate and validate uh, the market fit, if this is something that you wanna launch it. Very interesting. So how do you, you know, I can just imagine that you have this um, virtual clipboard with a long list of different technologies and different innovations that you could work on Talk to us yeah. about how you decide where to put your resources. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, at the moment, we are uh, for sure investigating what is in the hype uh, or what is still in the hype. Um, and I can mention uh, some, uh, some words and then I can give you some examples. Yeah. Uh, when you think about uh, distributed ledger, we are not just uh, looking, as example, at blockchain, but we are looking at what if distributed ledger what can be uh, relevant use cases in uh, customer experience. And I'm gonna go there. Although for some uh, use cases, maybe distributed ledger might be already considered like a major technology. Uh, when you look what SAP is doing overall in the supply chain, they're already tracing uh, uh, information for food. You know, you saw that recently there was a news press when uh, even we are helping tuna and the way how we, we help the um, fishing tuna in a very uh, health way that we can track, we can uh, then deploy again into the tuna camps so to, to grow the new fish, yeah? But in that case, when we think about uh, production, supply chain, my beat might be already um, considered mature. But in other use case, it's still on the eye. Then, uh, you know, again, we are talking about uh, customer experience, then automatically, uh, we are really curious on uh, what uh, mixed reality or augmented reality is going to even change the interaction between user and brand in the future, how their experience is going to change. And um, another trend with, which is really, really uh, important at the moment, which for me is a very, I, I really like because it will also help uh, improve uh, human life as a SAP mission, yeah, is a uh, Think about how we can even help uh, or improve uh, health. Uh, and today, you know, many, when we talk about uh, service cloud on all the service technicians that are going out in the field, there are still a lot of people that are dying. And now how can we help them by uh, supporting them with technologies? And you know, we are not gonna invent new technology, we are gonna integrate in our customer experience portfolio. Just imagine uh, Apple released the latest uh, Apple Watch and there are a lot of sensoric in there. Now imagine if we can integrate this in their day-to-day -day life when they are doing a, a normal task as a service technician. Those are a few examples of exciting things we are looking at the moment that we believe we want to put in the product roadmap for the next three to four years. Oh, and when, interesting. So, and something I want to mention, which is more relevant, which is going to become a standard product is a visual search. You know, sn snip a picture, take a picture. Maybe I love your shirt, your white shirt. 
I can take a picture, I can see similar products that I might like, and I can also now link with influencer. So that, that was something we launched uh, one year ago, and now it's gonna be part of the standard product. You see different variants, different maturity of the technology, and then different speed of uh, implementing into the normal market motion. Oh, what a fascinating world that you live in. Now, it seems to me when I'm thinking through these different innovations, a lot of them is underpinned by the ability to personalize an experience. And that requires identification of an individual so you, or a, some kind of identification so you can attach personalization to that. What kinds of innovations are you seeing around that area? That's uh, another great question because uh, uh, at CX Live this year, actually at Sapphire, we, we launched the press release. And, uh, you know, we want to be actually, uh, we want to go to the next level of what we call uh, digital identity. Really implementing this notion of uh, self-sovereign. And what does it mean self-sovereign? For people that don't know, is really to bring the, the ownership of the identity back to the individual. Because today, um, although the way how we authenticate has been simplified a lot, yeah? So you see Google, uh, you can now use a um, double factor authentication, or back in the past, uh, there was this introduction of social login. Maybe you don't need to type password uh, again, or you just say, okay, you are in now in this brand web page, and then you say, identify with Facebook. But the issue we want to solve, or the problem statement we want to solve is we want to democratize or give back the rights to the individual. Because at the end of the day, if you authenticate with Facebook or with Google or even with Apple, as Apple just launched their authentication for many, many domains, they still own your data. And uh, you cannot really decide when you want to deprecate your data. So as example, um, I give you my name, my, <clears throat> my birth date, my preference, and then you're going to store it and you're going to target me and you're going to do marketing with me. Now we want to go to the next level of trust. And you know, we, with Giga, with Customer Data Cloud, we've, we set the foundation for level one. But now the next level is a give back this trusted profile into the ownership of the individual, where the individual is in control. And we did already some proof of concept. We're already working with some uh, customer now to validate this. Uh, at, the, at this point in time is a new technology. We are validating the business case and the problem statement. But the beauty is uh, I can now log in. Uh, uh, the only thing we ask the brand is they need to activate uh, login with KOI, which means key zero one, key yeah. your data. Zero one is the digital version of saying, um, is the binary uh, representation of data. And what we do is uh, those brands are just activating a new login uh, aspect, which will leverage our uh, customer data cloud technology. But the beauty is that now we give all the control back to the individual. He can now say, okay, I log in, I give this 10 consent, and then maybe uh, I have my portal and I see all the brands I'm, uh, I'm working with. And now I can also do a mass uh, uh, disconnection. And automatically the data is gone. And this is how we see the future. It's connected to provide beautiful experiences. The more those brands will be trusted with, with the individual, the more I will be willing to keep my data to those brands. That's number one. And number two, the benefit we see, it's uh, for sure we wanna solve a social impact benefit, but we, we also observed recently that now there is no any more brand looking at improving their own customer journey but I'm quite sure you saw recently what Airbnb did. They hired the former CEO of Virgin America. So, and this sounds to us important because they're going now through a customer journey of customer journey. They want to really integrate. And how can you do this? If you federate the identity across this brand in a very super trusted way, that they can say, okay, now I offer to you not anymore an hospitality journey or a travel journey. I, uh, I offer to you an overall experiential, let's say end-to-end -end travel experience. And that's why identity for us is gonna be an important project. 
especially for B2B, yeah? Wow, so for the first time, or not the first time, but um, and it's an important step to or, toward giving individuals the ownership of their own personal data, right? Correct. And, and give it, giving them transparency into how their data is being used and control over what data they want to share with what company and with what brand. That's powerful. Yes. And this is the, you know, we have actually want to solve two problem statements. This is more in the business world, but we also think about the social impact. Um, you know, every year, every day or every year, there are a lot of newborn without identity. And when you think about also the refugees, today is very, very difficult. How can they still prove that, uh, you know, their name is Mr. Brown, as example? I think on the social impact, uh, giving back the identity to the individual will really unlock a lot of potential. And today, you can actually access back to your identity with new mechanisms, such your retina, uh, biometric, even your re recognizing your heartbeat because it's unique. So, but at the moment, this is pure research we are doing. But I do believe this will solve a business problem. But as we SAP, we want to help the run, work, uh, work, run better and improve people's life. I think this will also have a great social impact. Got it. So how do you identify or uniquely identify or authenticate that somebody is actually who they say they are? You gave the idea. I mean, you gave the example of refugees. And I have the honor of being a mentor within the refugee community here in Boise, Idaho. And, you know, it's, it's, that, that's one thing. How do you actually, you can have a lot of different ID paperwork, but how do you, or even a digital online presence, but how do you actually um, connect that to a physical person and authenticate that that person is who they say they are? So basically, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you need a uh, trusted advisor, not in the, in the central world. When you were born, you were signing paper, uh, and there was another testimony, ocular, usually is a doctor, which will sign something, yeah? If you look uh, in, uh, from a social impact point of view, at the end of the day, you might need uh, already five people. It's like a LinkedIn network. If you start with five, and those five are part of a network, or they become nodes that can already certify you, Yes. So you can already improve a certain level of uh, authentic authentication, yeah? Mm -hmm. But the other aspect will be also now, okay, we will solve this problem, but the next aspect will be, we also want to have a government, we want to have a, a general uh, authorities to become part of the network, mm. where everyone can also uh, support and, uh, you know, bring their own value in that, yeah? Yes. I understand. So they would validate that that person is who they say they are, put a stamp on that, and then you could uh, take it from there. So um, when we met um, a few weeks, or I guess a month or so ago at CX Live, we were t you had brought up the name Project Antwerp and said yeah. that's something that would be really interesting to talk about. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's a very interesting product because uh, a project because uh, um, when you look at the word Antwerp means fair trade port. Where you know in a, in the past you had this port where there were you know people were trading. Yeah, and we took this analogy to to think, okay, how can we technically use a, a distributed ledger to solve a common business problem that exists today? Um, putting together different organizations to define or to stamp attributes of uh, spe specific products that are going through different organizations. When you think about chocolate, as example, chocolate in some cases, uh, you know, in few cases, okay, if you go in Switzerland, they are the champion, they made from scratch. But uh, there are still, uh, you still want to say, okay, chocolate came from cacao. Uh, maybe who, what was the quality of this cacao? And you want to have uh, uh, someone uh, providing an attribute in there, which is immutable. And then you add milk. And then you want to also have the quality of milk. And, the, you know, the, the value of that product, when you see uh, different organization 
that are uh, decentralizing this information, but they are all trusted. So when you become a buyer, this will really improve the buying experience because I want to really buy a product which is not uh, only, um, you know, it's not only one brand declaring those ingredients, but I, I really want to see that uh, everyone was contributing in that and the information which is stamped there, it's immutable. And, and you know, I see this like, uh, especially in US, uh, you love uh, organic food. I think this will become organic 2.0 as example when we talk about food but this can apply in many, many categories, even in fashion. Because in fashion, one of the biggest problem today is to create fake, uh, and then you put a nice uh, Armani logo, right? So, but many people really wanna uh, certify the entire chain of uh, master data creation. That's what we, we are trying to do with Antwerp. We are now validating the, the business case. Technology-wise, uh, we prove it, it worked. It. And now we want to do as we are running an innovation unit. We need to go through the funnel, go to the first 10 customers, get their feedback and see if that business model will really become a, a great business model to put different stakeholders together. Oh, I can see that having so much relevance and so much value within the SAP Ariba space. Where, yes. they're, where they're doing sourcing and they're bringing all the ingredients together for manufacturers, etc. Fascinating. That's great. I shall speak with my friend Marcel Bolmer, yeah? because I'm quite sure he will come with some uh, beautiful ideas. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, Ingenio, for joining us while you're on holiday and sharing what goes on in SAP Customer Experiences Innovation Labs. So thank you very much for joining. Thank you. It's a pleasure, as always. And I want to thank everyone out there for staying tuned. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>